All right, just crank it up. Obviously, really pleased with uh, yesterday, man, getting a win uh, on the road. Ain't nothing easy about it. And was really proud. All three phases, I thought, stepped up in big ways and had impact plays. Um, defense there to close out in the end with two big PBUs was fantastic. Uh, I thought our offense was very balanced, did a really good job of of keeping them um, kind of a play behind. So so was really proud about that. This It was definitely not perfect. There are areas that we made mistakes, hurt ourselves, can't turn the ball over. Um, missing kicks some 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 uh stuff like that that we're gonna have to clean up but overall really pleased with it thought the staff uh in all three phases did a remarkable job so excited about it and and uh now we're on to to the eagles and started the prep on that this morning all right dave calabro hey coach congratulations uh just want to get what's the reaction been like the past 18 hours from your family friends and <laughs> former players, conversations, and is it nice to kind of shut up the national critics for a little bit here? Yeah, it's it's been great. The, the, the replies have been fantastic. I mean, you know, so many of the guys and and uh, friends throughout the country have sent text messages. I haven't been able to get back to all of them. I mean, even starting back to early in the week, uh, I've had so many, so many people support and I'm so grateful for it. Um, and and uh, it, it has been, it has been a, a, uh, an intense week, right, for everybody. And and so I think mostly when I'm thinking of myself, not not talking about this organization, but myself for my family, you know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, we had talked about, I don't think they were prepared. I have been very good about not reading, not listening, not really being concerned with, um, but I have had to remind my family and, and I, I'm glad I do because that just shows the loyalty we have to each other uh, about, listen, man, the, the, the Lord is our defender. He's our, you know, he promotes, he directs. And, and so don't be be concerned with outside. I felt, you know, I felt conviction about the the opportunity. I knew I was going to take it for um, for those reasons, and and I have no, um, you know, I got I got no qualms with what anybody says about their opinion. Great. Uh, if they disagree with it, still love them. Not really worried about. It. I got other things I got to take care of. But uh, to get a win, really for the guys in this building, for the staff. Uh, man, it, it meant the world. Just just all the effort and energy that went in was uh, and the physical and mental fatigue these guys had to be over long trip, long trip back home. And uh, but man, so appreciative of the effort. And I think that to me was what I appreciated most. Right. You're some games you're going to win, some you're going to lose. But man, the the effort I saw it on, from the sidelines onto the field, guys were involved. They were rooting each other on and the support for each other. It was infectious. And, and that to me is what ball is all about. Mike Chappell. Chef, through your career, you've never been through this as far as an interim coach. A lot of times there's that in, initial boost, emotional, whatever, which we saw Sunday. The question is, how, how do you sustain that? I mean, how do you, Make sure this wasn't a one-time great story. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Sustainability. We talked about it last night, right? Is that this is you know there's, we still got a lot of games left, and and we have uh, processes in place that that we know we have to we have to achieve and we have to execute to. Um, and so we talked about that last night on the plane ride home. Hey, here's you know making sure roles were clarified, anything that had to be moved around or adjusted a little bit. You know, the biggest adjustments that I've made so far, most like you know from a scheduling point, I want to make sure that's not taxing the staff even more because the process to me is the most important. And so, uh, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, kind of, kind of get yourself around the ebbs and flows of the league. I learned this from Tony and Jim Caldwell is the process doesn't change, right? We understand the key contributors to wins, turnover ratios, special teams, right? Not giving up big plays, making big plays, all of making sure that we're checking all of those boxes along with our install game plans, the thought process, make sure we're not losing the, the macro view or the micro view, keeping it all kind of tied in. And that's, to me, that's my job right now is making sure that we're we're not missing on those areas. And I feel like everybody's on top of it. And and uh, again, we as excited as we were about beating the Raiders, we got to go play the Eagles. You know, the game, the game don't change. It keeps moving on. So uh, we got another opportunity this week and, and uh, we're excited about it. Just a quick follow up. So it's not so much about what you guys did emotionally. It's how you it's the execution efficiency moving forward. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. Right. I mean, and, and I talked about, you know, execution to me when I define this out to players about the how we were going to do this execution is doing exactly what we're coached to do so that if we have to solve problems mid game, we understand where everybody was supposed to be so that we can make an adjustment. If we got guys ad libbing or not quite doing it or not quite bought in, that's when we can't make adjustments. And that's when bad goes to worse. So giving up one bad play isn't an issue. It's that, hey, we weren't in the spot we were supposed to be. We made a mental error. We didn't, we weren't in the places we were supposed to be. Yeah. I thought, listen, from a, an emotional perspective, to me, emotion usually runs out about midway through the first quarter. Now we're execution, right? And, and that, you know, I, I played it a long time. I know the the ebbs and flows of where the games feel um, until the, the, the middle or, or of the fourth quarter, kind of how all those things feel and look. And so making sure that we that the process clears up so many of those issues that it's not just being carried on emotion, because you and I both know, chap, that 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 can wear out on you. You got to make sure that you're 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 mentally focused and prepared uh, to, to do it play after play. Joel Erickson. Uh, Jeff, two two injury questions. Did did Quiddy Pay have a setback with his ankle in practice last week? And then the other one was. There was a report that Der that Shaq Leonard is uh, meeting with a specialist about his back. What what's going on with him? So Quiddy, uh, no, was injured on Sunday, I, and and um, so they came to me. I, I think it was in the second half and told me hey, he's he's uh, he's probably down. Uh, but that was all that I got uh, yesterday, and so he's on the injury report. I haven't met with those guys yet. I just know that that uh, he was going to see the docs this morning. Um, yeah, Shaq. Uh, I'm. I don't know who he's going to meet with. I know uh, that we had we had put him on on IR, and the conversations were where do we go from here. So I know he's meeting with our training staff and our docs. I'm not sure if he's going to another doctor, which um, obviously you know is is all good from my perspective. Just figuring out what's going on um but man Shaq is a he's an incredible leader for this football team and even being in street clothes yesterday man he is a he is a voice that this this group follows is encouraged by and he has done a fantastic job even I'm so I can't tell you how heartbroken I am for him I know how much he loves this game and how good he is at this game um and so I'm I'm disappointed for him as well and uh, whoever he's trying to see I'm sure is trying to get him back as as soon as possible and uh that's what that's what you know guys like Shaq do man as fast as he can get back I know he'll want to and uh that's probably what he's going to do today Stephen Holder hey Jeff um, I'm wondering if you can kind of uh, just go back a little bit to last week um, in terms of how you handled the quarterback. Uh, I know you said you you kind of you kind of felt like you knew on Friday that that Matt was going to be your guy, uh, but you had to get a, a good look at both of those guys. I imagine in practice, did you kind of divide the snaps up? How did you kind of go about the week at quarterback? Yeah, no. So from from my perspective, I you know I'd seen uh, I had seen Sam play all on Wednesday. And so, um, you know, from the, from the quarterback perspective, you you know, it's kind of a volume throwing thing, right? And so, um, I gave I gave Matt all the snaps. Um, or it may not have been all of them, but I, the majority of them, you know. So, so don't hold me to. I can't remember exactly, but right. I gave I let him be the guy on Thursday to see, you know, what he was going to feel like, what does it look like, how does he throw, because, I mean, you know, from my perspective, I haven't seen him, you know, I don't know what practice looks like for him, and so I needed to get a good feel of his command in the huddle, I had seen Sam on Wednesday, um, was very pleased with how he played on Wednesday, and then uh, on Thursday, I wanted to see what Matt looked like, he looked to me he looked really good, so I backed it up the same way on Friday. Let him go at it. Wanted to see what two days would feel like for him. Um, he kept assuring me, you know, man, I feel good, I feel fine. But I, again, from a guy, you know, who who hadn't been here in the building, I, you know, I, I wanted to make sure what all that looked like. But I thought Friday's practice, in all honesty, was our best practice of the week. And and was the most spirited and and uh, was the most precise. Very few uh, errors. I felt like our tempo was really good, and so that's when you know that, that that's really what gave, solidified it for me. Quick, quick, All right, quick well, follow up on, on Matt because I mean, as a as a head coach, especially in your position, you know, you're coming in mid mid season. The coach coaches rely so much on the quarterback for leadership. Um, having him, how does it kind of help give you a boost in in your position? 
Oh yeah. I mean, you know, he, he, he's, he is the guy, right. When you think about offensively and um, you know, you, you're, you want your quarterback comfortable when he's comfortable in everything you're doing, he, he brings that confidence to the other 10 in the huddle. Hey man, you know, I'm, I, I love the plan. I love how we're going to execute this. And then when things get off kilter a little bit, he's the driver to get you back on and, and understand what that looks like. And so um, he knew my, he, you know, he knew the mentality going in, you know, we want to be a, a very balanced offense. He's he's equally productive, in my opinion, underneath or in gun, which I like. I like being able to mix all those things up. So kind of every box I want checked, I thought he did uh, extremely well. And to your point, the leadership portion of that means there isn't any hesitation. And that's vital. That is vital for an offense. Confidence is vital. And when it's coming from the guy who, who's making all the calls, uh, it, it's that much more important. And so he's a heck of a leader. Listen, even when he wasn't practicing, he was a great leader. And I know they had a – you know, when in meetings and in conversations, this is a very tight football team. And and he he never backed down from his leadership responsibilities, which I appreciated. Um, and so a, again, for me, his confidence and I mean, listen, in his resume of, of what he's done. I've watched a lot of Matt Ryan. I live live in Atlanta and you know, watched a lot of Falcons games. And so um I have familiarity with with his style and what he's done in his career. So I kind of leaned on all of those things. All right, we'll go three more, Kevin Bowen. Hey, Jeff, um, when you look back on last week, maybe the biggest surprise or challenge that came across your desk, and then it, when you look at Sunday, end game, biggest surprise or challenge in game? Oh, man, those are great questions. So, um, biggest – so fr- probably from in the building, I would say um, – schedule like the, the how how you know how involved the scheduling in the process is to get it kind of aligned with where you want uh there's so many different facets that that you know if you want to move this or change this how does it affect the next you know whether it's the next period of practice or whether it's post practice recovery all the different you know, points. And when, when you're kind of thrown in, um, there are things that I know that I have conviction about that I want to get fixed, but it's, is this the right time? And so just being prayerful and thoughtful about, Hey, how do I make adjustments without being overbearing or without taxing the guys who are already in the building, making sure I'm very sensitive to what's already being asked of them. Um, and I, I think there's been a great balance. Guys have been honest about, Hey, this would make it really hard or no, we could do this coach. Like let's, let's make, this move we can make a small tweak here or there but you know ultimately we'll we'll all get together um so that that's from the in the building you know game wise the speed of the game you know from a player perspective it's it's much slower you know because because you're only really you're only really dealing with your portion and and so um you know, it, it, from from the coaching perspective, what I've had, and you know, everybody makes fun, but in high school, whatever it is, like you know, ga- games were short because the time on the clock. You know what I mean? But but even in this game, I, I looked up in the third quarter, and there's two drives, and the quarter's over, and you're like, man, you know, we we're in the fourth, and it's everything happens so fast. Uh, the way the clock and, and and everything, the speed of the game, um, it you know, I, I almost felt like. Man, like I, 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 you know, I want more, right? I, you know, like it, it, you know, you you want more shots at it, but it was um, the communication from our staff was was fantastic. Those guys did a great job, but that's probably the biggest difference is, you know, you want you 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 get into the rhythm of the game and you're like you're having fun with it, you know. I, I love the back and forth. It was and it was listen, it was a heck of a game to be a part of. It was back and forth, lead changes. You know, I know. Uh, you, you shouldn't like that, but I, I loved watching our guys meet the challenge time after time and response, man, made made it so much more fun for me to see guys come off the sideline. Mm-hmm. Man, we're going to do it this way, do it that way. I, I, that's what I love. And so that was a ton of fun. All right. Uh, George Bremer. Jeff, you mentioned earlier that I uh, can't rely on emotion long term, and obviously that's what I call, but it seemed like this week in particular, you were able to tap into kind of that primal vein of us against the world and kind of get guys band together. In that sense, will you look at the point spread at all this week? Will you bring that up with the guys at all this week? Is it, I, I, is it bad, George? I haven't looked at it, so I'm sure it's not pretty. <laughs> Nine and a half. 
Oh, so that's a bad one. That's a bad one, right? Now, nah, listen, man. I I'm not sweating that. I I don't know. I don't know that we were. Fa- I, I'm not sure who was favored in the last one, but it probably wasn't our way. But I, you know, when I look at those things, um, I've been around this game a long time, man, and I know that that uh, you know there there is perception and there is reality. And I think Tony Dungy used to do a fantastic job, and I try to replicate that of. Hey, here's the perception of who we are, and here's the reality. Here's a perception of who the team we're playing is. Here's the reality. We have to we have to live in the reality, not the perception. And here's the way that we have to go at and 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 attack this football team if we want to give ourselves a chance. So that won't change for me, George, irrespective of the of the point spread or or, or whatever that is. But um, I, again, I think that the, I think the men know the challenge before them, and uh, I expect them to to meet the uh, meet the standard. All right, last one, JJ. Hey, Jeff, you're talking about communication. And at the end of the first half, call, you know, Parks calls for two runs with under 30 seconds to go, seconds to go with one timeout left. That specifically, um, what did that do for just your your trust and confidence in that communication part of it? Well, yeah, we were we were talking about that honestly all the way through the drive. And and uh, I think I think the one you were first talking about it was 32 seconds. We're like at the logo. And uh, I knew we had one time out. I was staying by the uh, I was going to stay by the, the, the side judge. And <clears throat> I knew if it's in the middle, we're going to let this one roll. We're going to hit another one. Uh, JT did a fantastic job on that last run of getting down where I could bust the time out at three seconds, making sure you're not trying to make that extra yard. Right. That we're we're trying to get ourselves in better field goal position. Thought execution was perfect. Uh, really, really did it well. And honestly, we knew we were getting a two for one, right? We were going to try to get points, come back out after halftime and double dip. Unfortunately, we 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 missed the field goal. They're coming back out, but that was a big point of emphasis for me with the guys. And so I thought they executed it uh, tremendously. And JT, you know, hats off. It's it's hard for running backs, right? You see that open field, you think, man, maybe I can bust it. But if unless it was wide open, it's a get down. Let's hit timeout. It all worked out great. 